one very important thing you should know is that numbers, data, should never be treated as a solid fact. Before trying to interpret a percentage or the result of a statistical test, before basing your argument on them, you should always ask yourself first, are my data reliable? You should always remember, data are made by humans and humans make mistakes. Even when the data you are using were produced by a powerful software or a complex model, remember that it was a human that who parameterized the model. He could have been tired, in a hurry to go home, and have done a sloppy job. Let me exemplify this with an example we discussed in another video, the Reinhardt and Rogoff controversy. For the record, they published a famous research article that was published in the American Economic Review that linked public debt and annual growth. It is called Growth in the Time of Debt. They pulled together data on growth and debt for advanced economies and computed the average growth for three categories of debt. Low, medium, high and very high. Uh, four actually. Their thesis is that when the debt went beyond 90%, economic growth tended to decrease sharply. However, Thomas Hernan, a then student, failed to reproduce their results for an assignment. He asked the authors for their original dataset, and they provided it in the form of an Excel datasheet. And there it was. The reason behind the discrepancy between, between Herndon's results and the author's results, a major mistake in the formula, that led to omit a quite significant subset of the dataset. When the mistake was corrected, the results changed drastically. The average growth for high debt was close to 0% originally, but when the mistake was corrected, it, it reached 2%. So, no such drastic decrease in GDP after the magical threshold of 90%. Given how impactful the original paper was, given the, the fact it was cited thousands of times and used to legitimize austerity policies all over the world, it is quite an issue. By the way, this underlines the importance of open data. When you publish your results, whether it is a research paper, a report, whatever, by making your data available to anyone, you allow other people to scrutinize what you have done and sometimes detect important mistakes, whether they are intentional or not. Sharing the code is also a best practice. In the case of Renard and Rodolphe controversy, it allowed to detect issues in an Excel formula. Issues commonly occur during the pre-processing step. Prior to the actual analysis, you usually transform the raw data, construct new variables based on existing ones. It's called feature engineering. It is only after you have cleansed your data set that you can start producing graphs and so forth and so on. Various biases can be introduced in the process and should be analyzed first. For instance, in growth in the time of debt, the authors pulled together some data when they should have refrained to do so. Growth data for the United Kingdom for the high debt category corresponded to 19 years. They were averaged. For New Zealand, it was less often crippled by debt. It corresponded to only one year with a strong recession in 1951. The data analysis give, gave the same way to New Zealand with one point and to UK with 19. This point is the reason for the misleading results they obtain. And that's typically an issue of data pre-processing. Another classic you should know is outlier management. Outliers are those data that you do not feed the general trend. For instance, in a classroom, boys tend to be taller than girls after 15 years old. And the outlier will, will be the, uh, the 6.2 feet tall girl. If your narrative is that the boys are always taller than girls, then this one individual can threaten you, you, your narrative. And it's not uncommon for scientists to remove the outliers that threaten the narrative without necessarily saying so when describing the methodology. With a graph, for instance, an outlier would look like that on a box plot, far from the rest of the points. It is inconvenient in a narrative if it is inconvenient, 
well, oops, sometimes it disappears. Magic. In a way, it's a form of cherry picking. In some instances, it can be legitimate to remove outliers, but if you do so, you should always mention it. And explain your rationale, unlike what was done in the Reynard and Rodok Rogoff article. So remember, check whether your data are reliable before building your argumentation on it. An argument can be valid if it is logically correct, but if you want the argument to be sound, the premises need to be true and the data reliable.